uh, we're going to get started now. Uh, so thank you, first of all, for joining us uh, relatively early here on the east coast of the United States. So we appreciate those that are uh, geographically proximate to us or perhaps even earlier than us in Arkansas and in Chicago, uh, getting up early to attend this webinar. Uh, first, some helpful hints. Uh, if you have any difficulties with GoToMeeting, the, uh, the best thing to do right now is to exit from GoToMeeting and then uh, log back into it. Uh, we find that works the best. We don't have any facility here to provide you with direct technical support. So that's probably the best way to go about things. As I mentioned, when we got started, it looks like there's more people joining us. So, so uh, I will continue to mention this, but your microphone for your attendees will be muted. Uh, we will allocate time at the end of the presentation for questions and answers. So if you do have any questions along the way, please type those into the questions box in the side panel and we will do our best at the end of the presentation to answer those. Uh, you may note in that sidebar as well, there are several documents that you can download. Those come to us uh, courtesy of our uh, of Stu Showerman, our, our expert presenter from uh, Know Before. Uh, you can download those at any time during the presentation. Uh, there's some useful documents. And for those of you who stick around till the end of the presentation, we appreciate you bearing with us. Uh, there'll be a special gift that we'll provide for you as well. So thanks again for joining. Welcome to this is the first of our ongoing series of webinars uh, from Purview, highlighting important issues in the healthcare profession. Today's topic we're gonna focus on is ransomware and the, that invidious behavior of hackers who take over providers' networks, bringing their operations to their knees sometimes. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. For those of you who are, who are interested, next week on the 13th of July at 11.30 a.m., uh, Purview will also be hosting a webinar on the increasing importance of patient access to their own medical records. What we as providers need to know about how this enhances our practices and how to do this efficiently and perhaps even save some money over burning of CDs, which many of us are currently engaged with. And then on the 19th of July at 1 p.m. all Eastern Daylight Time, we're gonna introduce the idea of a new low cost hybrid cloud onsite pack. So the combination of the two, perfect for the subspecialist who needs access to medical images, but it's not in a position to install a full blown packs like our radiology brethren. All these webinars will be recorded. So even if the time slot that's scheduled doesn't work for you, register anyway, and you will be messaged when the recorded version is posted. And again, today's, ver today's uh, webinar will be uh, recorded as well. But back to today's topic, ransomware. Uh, while you've certainly heard and read about some of the high profile attacks, uh, you may not be aware, but already in 2016, so halfway through 2016, 18 major North American hospitals have been hit with ransomware uh, situations. Uh, scores of other healthcare organizations that don't make it into the press have been hit as well. Um, we've had, uh, we had one customer when we, uh, when we announced this webinar told us that it was uh, just a bit too late. They're a veterinarian in central Florida and they had been hit by a ransomware attack as well. Healthcare now accounts for about a third of all of the incidents in the ransomware world. And it's estimated to cost our industry something in the range of 5.6 billion, that's B, billion dollars annually. Uh, that's a lot of Bitcoin. Uh, and now the attacks are occurring at less traditional computing targets, things like X-ray machines, CT, MRI modalities, and even tax systems are now being infiltrated. Uh, so hopefully this, this webinar will give you some information about how to both avoid it and deal with it if it were to happen to you. Uh, let me talk about the, uh, the agenda just real quickly. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about what ransomware is and why we in the healthcare industry uh, are a focus of this behavior. We'll talk about preparing and preventing ransomware attacks. We'll also talk about limiting the damage, operating under siege in the unfortunate event that this occurs to you, negotiating with these ransomware pervaders, uh, what to do post-infection, and then as I said, we'll take your questions and answers and our expert panelists will be around to provide some of those answers for you. And speaking of experts, let me introduce the speakers real quickly. First off, we have uh, Stu Showerman, pictured in the middle there. He's the founder and CEO of Know Before. It's my pleasure to have him participate with us. He's a data security expert with 30 years of IT industry creds. Uh, know Before hosts the world's most popular integrated security awareness training. 
And some of the uh, handouts that you've gotten uh, were courtesy of No Before, as I mentioned before. Also, uh, on the left-hand side, you see Philip Jackson, and he's not that basketball coach or perhaps the player, depending on how old you are, uh, but he is the founder of Purview. He's an expert in the field of medical imaging systems and processes, and he was one of the first in the industry to identify the cloud as an alternative to an on-site PEX. Thanks for joining us, Phil. And I'm Les Trackman. I'm the managing director of Purview. Purview is a firm focused on ensuring that medical images and patient diagnostic data are freed from their silos and are available wherever, however, and whenever they're required to enhance patient treatment. And we want to make sure that those images are resilient despite ransomware attacks or other natural or man-made disasters. So first to get started, I'd like to, to poll our audience. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, the poll will show up on the screen in just a minute. But the first question I have for you, and there'll be three as we go along during the day today, have any of you already been subject to a ransomware attack? If you wouldn't mind, just press one of those two radio buttons that should be showing up on your screen right now and submit that. I'll give you a couple seconds to do that. I'll count it down and then we'll show the results of that. So I'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, we're complete. We'll close the poll now, show you the results that we've gotten. It looks like, wow, a full third of you have already been involved in ransomware attacks. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, but it is real in our industry, and you probably fall into the statistical uh, certainty of what's going on in our industry today. So there's been a lot of this going on. Uh, thanks for participating in that. That gives us a little bit of an idea of our audience and uh, how familiar they are with this. Okay, so let me introduce uh, Phil Jackson, who will take over this portion of the presentation. Uh, Phil's going to talk about what ransomware is and why the healthcare industry is so worried about this. Phil? Thanks, Les. First, I want to introduce you to what ransomware is. So ransomware is software, and it installs on your computer, and it does it uh, in a lot of different and, and malicious ways. It's made for the Mac and the PC, so they covered all of their bases to make sure that it was platform agnostic, as we like to say in the cloud space. And, uh, you know, it, what it ultimately does, it encrypts your data, makes it hard uh, to do business. You know, ransomware has been around for a long time. In fact, the computer virus that haunted early AIDS researchers in 1989, it was distributed on a five and a quarter inch floppy disk, for those of us who remember those, and was created by a Harvard-trained evolutionary biologist. Uh, and that software changed the file names of all of the files on your computer and asked for a licensing fee in order to regain access to your information. So that was just the beginning. In 2013, ransomware began to spread like wildfire with over a quarter of a million unique samples of ransomware in the first quarter of the year. Ransomware, while it has roots in the United States, is developed abroad uh, heavily in Eastern Europe. Uh, you know, a fun fact about ransomware, many of the organizations that are responsible for ransomware, the hackers, as we like to call them, participate in online forums, uh, helping with customer service to make sure that if we're infected, we know exactly how to pay, what currency to use, and the magnitude of the issue you're facing. There are numerous ransomware applications they go by prominent names, uh, the Locky, Crypto Locker, and Sama. They take advantage of uh, issues and software applications that we make use of in enterprise and on our home computers. And like a regular computer virus, the more people who come in contact with ransomware, the more people can get it. It's important to note that in your organization, you shouldn't implement things like uh, all employees at myorganization.com email lists. They propagate ransomware inadvertently uh, and uh, ultimately can lead to numerous computers on your network being infected. If you get ransomware, Stu will talk more about how to deal with it, but quarantine the infection. Disconnect the computers from the network. The impact of ransomware is astronomical, um, especially as we consider uh, healthcare organizations. It denies access to your files. It puts a screen up on your computer, and you're effectively held hostage uh, until you take action. Ransomware is delivered through a number of different malicious activities, uh, capabilities, 
malvertising, uh, which is malware advertising, is particularly evasive because it feeds malicious advertising through websites that otherwise would be safe, CNN, YouTube. It contradicts the basic web safety tips security experts have drilled into our heads, such as stay away from sketchy sites if you don't want to pick up malware. Backdoors and keystroke loggers, uh, they're also ways that you can become infected. Keystroke loggers are really scary. Uh, they document all of the keystrokes uh, as you're typing. This can include your banking credentials. It can include administrator server credentials. Uh, it can really include many things. And keystroke loggers have become more sophisticated and, in fact, send screenshots uh, to those who've installed them. How do you get well after ransomware? And Stu will talk more about this. You pay a ransom. You install backups, or you restore from your backups. And hopefully, you have good backups, and they're taken regularly. Les mentioned 18 hospitals impacted by ransomware this year, three of which, Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center in LA paid a fine of $17,000. Kansas Heart, another hospital, paid the ransom. And then the hackers said they wanted more money. Kansas Heart had the wherewithal to say no and moved on and restored from backups. MedStar, a local health system uh, in our area, uh, Maryland, uh, was also impacted. And while they deny paying ransom, they are now back online. Healthcare organizations are prime targets for ransomware. They're prime targets for ransomware because of uh, life and death. Uh, this is what healthcare organizations deal with. They deal with healing the sick. And unfortunately, in order to do that these days, we rely heavily on electronic health record systems. They're paramount to providing patient care in our current fast-paced healthcare environments. But beyond the electronic health record, more and more devices are attached to the network in the healthcare environment. MRI scanners, x-ray scanners, uh, patient uh, monitoring devices, EKGs, uh, ultrasounds. All of these systems are connected to the network in order to share patient diagnostic information. And because of that, are prone to ransomware. And many times, these systems don't get software updates. They're running older versions of Windows. Uh, and, uh, and the reality is they're just as vulnerable as the computer on your desk. Patient care is delivered 24-7, 365. And because of that, there's absolutely no time to wait. If ransomware makes its way into your network, healthcare organizations are going to be keen to getting back online and operational as soon as possible. Healthcare organizations in general are simply not prepared to face ransomware. The staff, including IT departments, are not tuned into the realities of cybersecurity, which is something that Know Before can certainly help you with. And the reality also is that there is no alternative workflow for clinical staff in many environments, including training and basic paper charting techniques. Healthcare organizations have the ability to pay, and because of that, they are one of the number one targets for ransomware. And I'll hand it back to Les, who can share another poll with us, and we can collect some more information. Great, Phil. Thanks. Uh, and we will do another. This will be the second poll uh, for the audience. If you would please, again, uh, respond to the poll. Has the prospect of ransomware, a ransomware attack, already caused you to take precautions? So are you taking precautions already in your organizations? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, again, respond to the poll by pressing one of the radio buttons on your screen. I'll give you a 10-second countdown for that, and then we'll, uh, we'll present the responses. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you. We'll close the poll. Uh, and uh, probably not surprised to see this response. So the, uh, the response is 93% of the attendees have taken some precautions already in your organization, and that's probably very good. Uh, there's probably more you can do. And what I'd like to do now is introduce Stu Showerman from Know Before, who can help you with that. He is probably the preeminent expert in the world on ransomware. Take it away, Stu. Good morning, everyone. First of all, if you can hear me okay. Could someone uh, acknowledge? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're, we can yeah. do it fine, Stu. Thank you. Very good. 
Um, yeah, uh, like Phil said, uh, ransomware has been around for a while already, but September 2013 was when ransomware went pro. Um, that was the, the very first industrial strength version called Crypto Locker, which uh, arrived at the scene and made something like $28 million in a few months. Um, people suddenly realized that ransomware was here to stay. And um, there are several things you can do to make sure that if an, an end user opens up an infected attachment, that you are able to uh, recover. Uh, like you see on the slide, um, weapons grade backups is what I essentially always recommend as your number one mitigation for a, a ransomware infection. Um, that can take a couple of different flavors. Um, for instance, cloud-based failover is a really good idea. Um, second, if you have another way to get access to the files, something that you are able to see despite the fact that a workstation or a server is infected um, is, is a very good, essentially, fallback position if your workstation or your server, and in some case, uh, with a customer of ours, this is a true story, uh, a mid-size medical center had 250 machines, all of them, including their EKGs, their X-rays, their MRIs, everything was infected. And they were asked to pay about 120 Bitcoin as ransom. Um, and obviously, training your employees to not fall for these social engineering attacks is a good process to have in place. Yes, prevention is essentially um, something that is part of your defense in depth. Defense in depth is a concept where you are looking at your full technology stack from the top down. And defense in depth is starts really with the outside layer. And the outside layer is the mushy, messy layer uh, called humans. Um, you have to have your policy, and that is security policy, and security procedure in place. So have a good security policy, work out the correct security procedures, and then train employees so that they are aware of the risk and what they need to do. So you want to, in the medical sector, uh, despite the fact that there are often urgent, literally life or death situations, that they still apply and um, know the, the correct procedures to make sure that their systems don't get infected with, with ransomware. Um, Obviously, you want to update both the operating system and third-party applications. Um, I, I always say you have to, you know, patch religiously um, because in many cases, the ransomware uses uh, a vulnerability in either the OS or a third-party app to get in. Um, correct configuration of firewalls is um, certainly something that you want to look at, especially traffic that goes out. If you can block outgoing traffic, if a ransomware infection is, uh, is already on your machines, but you can um, essentially block the malware dialing out to the control and command server to get the actual initial hash that allows them to encrypt that will block the, the mechanism to begin with. And then obviously virus protection. Um, I need to go into that a little more in, in depth. Um, 
antivirus is starting to get less and less effective. Um, the average time that it takes antivirus to update itself is about six hours. If you just look at the industry and the over 40 or 50 antivirus products, on average it takes six hours for definitions and signatures to update. Um, guess how long the average phishing site is up? You got it, six hours. So there is a window of vulnerability with uh, antivirus that might give you uh, a what we call a false sense of security and you need very good backups. And that brings us to the next slide. Infections. This is um, very often um, an employee calls support and says, I get a strange message on my screen and or I can't get to my files anymore. Uh, this is the last thing that the IT help desk wants to hear um, because that's when you go into a, a scramble to find out uh, what's going on. Um, ransomware tends to encrypt every file with a particular file extension in um, on the whole machine. Uh, when they're, once they're done with that, they go for drives. Both mapped drives, which is a drive letter you can see, and unmapped drives are currently attacked by ransomware, which if you are, uh, for instance, drive G is your file server, and you have full access to that file server, uh, the ransomware will immediately encrypt all the files in the file server. Whatever is on that file server is no longer accessible at that point in time. So that is the very first, uh, call it red flag, when uh, you know you're infected. The other sign is when you go to the workstation and you look at the files, most ransomware strains uh, provide an, an inkling that they are on the system by all extensions have been renamed, so file extensions are now called .crypt instead of their existing file name. And generally ransomware leaves um, both a text message and an HTML message in every directory with decryption instructions. And last but not least, often they drop um, essentially something on the home screen, they change the Windows machine's backdrop and it will show either text or um, it will give you a horrible picture with uh, you are now infected and you need to pay. So that's how you know you're infected. Which gets us to how do you once you have a ransomware infection, how do you how do you limit uh, the, the damage that's being done? Um, yes, pulling the network plug is of course the very first thing you want to do, but it might already be too late. Um, there are a few steps you can even uh, do before. Um, there are current early versions of anti-ransomware products. Um, remember the old days when there was spyware and there was anti-spyware? Uh, over time you will find that existing uh, antivirus players are going to include protection against ransomware in their products, but we're not there yet. This is rare. So pulling the plug of that workstation, yes, immediately, but the damage may already have been done. So you need to immediately find out how far this infection has spread. Now, the infection may have gone to your file servers or your medical devices. So uh, an immediate assessment of how far has this uh, gone will also come from your users. 
if your help desk suddenly is flooded with calls, well, I can't get access to and fill in the blank, you know that there is a major problem. Um, the, the best thing to do is to get to, and this is a, a medical analogy, is, is find out immediately uh, what is your patient number zero. Um, which of your workstations was the culprit in getting this started? Uh, you can do that by looking at the at any machine, uh, look at a any encrypted file, um, right click and look at the file attributes, and um, in file attributes you will find the original file owner. So that is where it started. Um, once you know the, um, the, 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 the width of the infection uh, and the strain, you can try to see if there are decryptors around for that particular strain. Um, decryptors come and go. It's a, a, a cat and mouse game. The bad guys always have the advantage. So there's a very good chance there will be no decryptor there. And uh, now you need to determine whether you, your backup strategy is in place and, and works. One of the things we recommend is uh, have sufficient mitigation for backups in place and also test your restore function on a regular basis and or um, your secondary uh, you know, plan B, make sure you always have access to your files at any point in time. Because many people rely on backups uh, and then only too late find out that the restore function doesn't work and they are still out of luck. And then you may find yourself with, okay, our whole system is down. Um, I have seen uh, whole hospitals going back to paper. Um, the press has been all over this. Uh, pa people have been essentially refused access because they simply couldn't get to the point where they could provide care and they were just sh shunted to another hospital. Um, existing patients in the hospital were kept essentially waiting for treatment because there was no access to the patient records. So uh, once you are in the situation that your whole environment has been infected, there is really only a few things you can do. You can either decide to pay the, the ransom uh, which used to be around $500 per machine. Uh, recently, uh, other more sophisticated cyber gangs, I call them cyber mafias, uh, have gotten into this racket and um, started with much higher ransom demands, which you can negotiate down, which, which brings us to the next slide. Um, a good example, real life example, um, the small, you know, the medium uh, medical center that we were talking about, uh, they first said you need to pay 28 bitcoins. They paid. That's about 14 grand. Then the bad guy said, no, actually that was an error. It needs to be 128. Um, so they started negotiating. Ultimately, the ransom was uh, 68 bitcoins. You know, with the current exchange rate times five, six, seven hundred, that's serious money. Um, it is a much better idea to be able to to have your full infrastructure at a point where you can uh, ideally, for any machine that's infected, wipe it, wipe it down to bare metal, and rebuild from scratch. Um, you have to have systems in place that allow you to do that. So, um, and and then there is indeed the next question. Um, we did recently do a survey ourselves. How many people would be uh, paying the ransom? 
it depends a bit on the uh, on the scenario. It is how much data is at risk. The uh, the interesting thing is that if it's only a few hours, most people would would go for a backup. If a few weeks or months of data is at risk because backups turned out not to work, a substantial percentage voted first to find out uh, if 500 bucks in, uh, in in ransom would do it. And I think at this point in time we have uh, a quick survey. Yeah. So Where's that coming? Yeah. It's coming. If, if you wouldn't mind, again, this is the third of three. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, okay. uh, you'll see the poll show up on your screen. If you would please check one of the radio boxes, and if you were subject to a ransomware attack, would you pay the ransom? Have you thought about this already in your organization? And what would you do? If you wouldn't mind pressing one of those boxes, again, we'll give, do a 10-second ten ten countdown, and then we'll give you the poll results. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great. Close the poll, please, and let's see the answers. A little bit surprising here based upon what's actually been going on in the industry, but for the attendees in, uh, today, 76% uh, said they would not pay the ransom. Uh, I think that's great. I think it's very bold, and I think that uh, you probably need to adopt some of the techniques that Stu's talking about uh, to make sure that you're in good shape for that. So, Stu, if you wouldn't mind finishing up with the post-infection, we'll go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so now let's just say you've been hit with ransomware. Um, what do you do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Um, again, backups have access to your files uh, so that you cannot be held over a barrel with um, a ransom demand that you simply have to pay. Um, security awareness training for all employees. Um, Make sure that you have systems in place that um, ideally um, recognize infections early. There are, um, you know, strictly technical controls that you can put in place that that allow. Um, let's just um, monitor uh, the machine and find out if there is any application that that uh, access a whole bunch of files that it normally shouldn't. Uh, there are. There, there is code in place that allows you to throw a quick alert uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, there is anti-ransomware, the early, early products, uh, anti-ransomware in place. Um, but the best thing is, is to grab this concept that I started with called defense in depth. Look at your humans look at your firewall, look at your network, look at the hosts, and look at the applications, and then last but not least, look at the data. Um, and protect all these levels of your, of your organization to a point where uh, it, it becomes very hard to hack. Because ransomware gets in mainly through social engineering, meaning they attack the human, and second, um, if it starts, it it uses uh, your existing network. So, for instance, uh, one of the main things to limit an infection is to make sure that network drives aren't accessible. You have to organize your network to a point where there is mapped drives and unmapped drives are are protected. Those are the most important things to uh, to have in place. And that, uh, if you have those, uh, an infection is much less uh, impactful uh, than it than otherwise. Okay, back to you. Thanks, Stu. That was terrific. Uh, so, in conclusion. Uh, it appears that ransomware is here to stay. It's likely not going away quickly. Uh, probably a bit of that is fueled by the 25% of you who said you would pay the ransom. Uh, the ransomware criminals are getting rich. Uh, healthcare is a target-rich environment with many of the qualities that make it inviting to a hacker. 
including uh, the lack of preparedness, which is what this webinar is really aimed at. There are certainly are things you can and should do to immediately lessen the chances as well as the impact of an attack. Some of those Stu went through today, as did Phil. Uh, training of your staff to lessen the chances of the infection, the human part of that, including ongoing vigilance. Uh, you might want to check out No Before's phishing tests that they have on their website and help out your organization. We've done them here internally. They're quite inviting. Uh, and uh, it, it is a good test of your employees and certainly some training for them. Make good backups. I can't emphasize that enough. The backups that you make need to be real. They need to be tested. They need to be accessible. And they especially need to be accessible from outside of your network. So, for example, if your network goes down, but you've got your data backed up and you can't get to it from your network devices, how do you get to it? And one of those ways of getting to it is in the cloud, something that we at Purview like to talk about with our clients. Uh, so making sure your, your data is accessible, even if your networks are down, is the, uh, the fail-safe portion of that. So now what I'd like to do is open this up to questions and answers. Uh, I'll try to, I believe I'm the only one who gets the questions on my machine here. I will recite the question and then try to identify the expert that uh, might be best at answering that question. So if you do have a question, please type it into the sidebar on your screen and we'll try to answer as many of these questions as you can. Uh, so first question comes up. Um, if a ransom needs to be paid, how do you go about purchasing bitcoins? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure I would know the answer to that myself. Uh, Stu, is that one you'd like I can, to I can, Yeah, I can address that. Um, you need what you call a Bitcoin wallet. Um, those are downloadable for free. But then um, you need to buy Bitcoin. Um, we, uh, there are several different Bitcoin exchanges. One of them is Coinbase. Um, that is www.coinbase. Um, but there are many. Um, you can buy bitcoins, um, but this is a four-day process. You need to identify yourself. You need to send a picture with your driver's license. Um, it takes a while before you actually get these bitcoins in your bitcoin wallet. Um, uh, quite a few companies in the UK have started to create bitcoin wallets and buy bitcoin just in case. This is something you might consider. Okay, great. Uh, we've got another question. Uh, Phil, I think this one's going to be directed at you. What about cloud backup services such as Dropbox? Are they susceptible to ransomware attacks as well? So cloud services are, are, are clearly less susceptible in nature uh, simply because of how they interact with your system. Um, though it's important as you look to identify a cloud service for data backup that you consider the um, uh, regulations in your region. Uh, so in the United States, for example, um, HIPAA regulates your data, uh, regulates how your data is stored and how it's, uh, how it's made available. Uh, and, and in this case, Dropbox is actually not a HIPAA compliant platform. So you should be looking for platforms that are healthcare centric in the cloud, uh, you know, to, to back up your data and make it available, critically important, make it available and have it be available real time. So with Dropbox, let's for example say that you want to store medical images in Dropbox, they're going to be much less available to you than if you're using a purpose-built cloud platform like Purview. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Uh, another question was just raised, um, and Stu, I think this one's probably best for you. What is one of the largest organizations that's been infected? So is there a, is there a really big one that you can point to? Hmm. The problem is that um, the vast majority of ransomware infections never make it into the press. Um, but I would venture to say that MedStar over in your neck of the woods is one of the really large ones. Um, the, uh, it, you know, it is very bad PR for an organization. So most of them keep this out of the press and, and out of anybody's view. So if you suddenly see an organization go dark, 
uh, there is a very good chance they have been infected. Okay. Uh, next question that was answered that was asked. Uh, let's see if we have the answer to this one. Uh, Phil, this might be yours. Uh, is Crash Plan um, HIPAA certified? And uh, those of you who are on the call know that HIPAA is the certification required by the federal government with regard to um, privacy of medical data. So do we know? Do we have that answer? Do we have to look that yeah, up? Yeah, we do actually. So cra Crash Plan is uh, it can be enabled for HIPAA compliance. Uh, they require you to sign a business associate agreement, much like Purview does. Uh, they keep your data protected by storing encryption keys in an on-premise master server. Uh, they um, also allow you to change user roles and manage user creation and deletion, much like we do here at Purview. Um, you know, any cloud service, it's very important to read the fine print uh, and make sure that uh, you know, while uh, HIPAA compliance, you know, no cloud service can provide HIPAA compliance out of the gate unless you sign a BAA. So that's a must-have. Um, you know, there are other bits and pieces to this. Uh, the long and the short of it is though, Crash Plan is in fact uh, a platform that is HIPAA compliant, yes. Okay, great, thanks, Phil. Um, Stu, I think this one is also for you. Are automated local backups such as MacTime or sorry, the Mac Time Machine on a hardwired external drive also susceptible. So that's Time Machine on a Macintosh um, hardwired external drive. You know, um, as long as the external device is visible to the operating system as a drive, you're not safe. Um, so. Uh, ransomware is currently available in uh, multi-platform flavors or strains. Um, the, by far, the best way to do this is to have an external drive, but at the end of the day, unplug that drive. So it's simply physically not connected to the machine. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, we have another question. Um, and I'm going to leave this open, uh, panelists. You can decide if, uh, if any of you have answers to this, but what specific actions can be taken if an X-ray machine itself is infected? Phil, is that something you want to deal with? Thanks, Les. Uh, yeah, I will. So if an X-ray machine were infected by ransomware, you'd be following very similar protocols to if your workstation was infected. Best case scenario, your X-ray vendor has an image an image of your system that they can restore from, and that's that's really your best case scenario. When you have your modality vendor in your practice to perform service and support on your modality, make sure they take an image of your active configuration operating system and keep that on a DVD or external hard drive in the practice. It's a very quick process to restore that X-ray system if it is infected. Hopefully, your other systems in your environment are not infected, um, and you move on. Uh, there's no ransom paid, and you know everybody's happy. That would be the ideal scenario. Okay, thanks, Phil. Um, I think we have time for one last question. Uh, we've got one that's just come up. Um, is the cloud, if it's used as my primary storage, sufficient to avoid a ransomware attack? Phil, that's probably one for you as well. Yeah. You know, it depends on your cloud vendor. Um, at Purview, we go to great lengths to make sure that data is replicated in numerous data centers and that our customers also have a reliable backup of their data. Um, in some cases, our customers rely heavily on us to be their primary backup, primary data storage. Um, I think that if you're working with a cloud vendor that follows best practices, that implements uh, the, the appropriate protocols and has the appropriate security considerations in the cloud can be plenty sufficient, but again, it depends on the vendor. Um, and that's, you know, that as with any technology, it depends on how good the technology is. Okay, thanks, Phil. Uh, that's it in terms of our timing. Uh, appreciate all of you joining in, and as I promised, there is a uh, there's a, a parting gift for those of you who stayed with us. Uh, 
we will be sending you a link to download the Know Before Ransom Hostage Rescue Manual. Uh, obviously, we all hope that uh, you're not uh, subject to a ransomware attack, but the manual is great. It's one that we've read here at Purview uh, from cover to cover, and um, I think it's great uh, information to have, something that you should distribute within your organization. So we'll be sending you the link to that. Uh, thank you again for attending. The upcoming webinars are now shown on your screen for the remainder of uh, this particular tranche of webinar series from, from Purview, and the uh, session will be recorded. You'll be getting a link to that. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thanks to the presenters today as well. So long. Thank you.